Okay, so what I wanted to try and do today is to make a video to show you how you can get the most out of the tennis ratings daily spreadsheets that I sell from my website. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's a wealth of information for each match, and we can use that information provided to make some uh, informed judgments in the markets, both pre-match and also, crucially, in play, to um, get an edge on the markets, basically. Um, I really truly believe that it, it's vital to have a kind of script to trade from prior to each match, and uh, this is really does provide that. Um, so I really would recommend uh, making that purchase if, if if you're struggling in the markets and you you're not sure about the edges at all. Um, as you can see here, we've got the um, spreadsheet on the 20th of June 2013, which covers the grass tournaments. A uh, week before Wimbledon uh, quarterfinals today in this spreadsheet uh, in Eastbourne and Hertog and Bosch for the WTA and ATP. Um, right, first of all, I draw your attention to the bottom left-hand corner, which has got um, the um, current ATP mean grass hold percentage of 82.8, which basically means that the average ATP player holds 82.8% of the time on grass, which is a fair bit higher than the ATP general average which I think is around about 77% mark. Um, the WTA um, mean grass hold here is, at the time writing, is 69.4%. So um, we can use that information provided in the bottom left hand corner to um, make some informed judgments about each each player's potential success when the holding, the holding serve or breaking serve. So. Um, what we're looking at um, is to use that information to make some trading decisions that we can we can we can use to exploit the markets in play. Um, if a player's got a high high projected hold, then they should obviously hold a lot more than average. But how do we how do we use that to exploit uh, the markets and uh, create a viable trading strategy? Well, personally, I'm not a big fan of of um, backing the server at uh, 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 the start of a service game because uh, the risk reward is really not great. I mean, you can, your, your risk is huge and your reward's not fantastic whatsoever compared to it. Um, so that's not really for me. But what we can do is we can use the um, players with a high projected hold and maybe think about backing them at, at various points when they're losing in their own service game. In my um, trading handbook, which is also for sale via my website, you can... Um, it has all the various uh, statistics for each entry point uh, in a losing service game. So, for example, um, comparing whether it's better to enter at, say, 1540 as opposed to love 30, um, etc., etc. Um, clearly, um, if, if we've got a player with a low projected hold, then we can look to try and um, oppose their server definitely at points. Um, Depending on some various various factors, and uh, of course, making sure that that that, that trade will be valuable at that give, uh, value at that given time. So, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at some 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 matches, and then kind of go through the stats in them, and and uh, see how we could use that those stats to 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 kind of create a script for trading that match, um, which I think is really important because. It's, it's really great to have prep, kind of prepared strategies, uh, kind of, which you can which you can refer to in advance of tra training, rather than looking at a match and thinking, okay, well, he or she's playing well, okay, let's go back them, which is kind of very subjective um, analysis of it, which is something that I'm not particularly keen on. Much prefer the quantitative way of looking at a, 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 a match. Really, obviously, we're going to be looking, watching the matches when we can. To see to see things like that, but on the whole, I think a pre-prepared script is really really useful for trading matches. So here we go. The first game we have got Hampton against Safarova at the WTA Eastbourne. Um, on the right-hand side, we can see we've got some vital notes on some of the matches, and here we can see is a small grass sample on Hampton. So it's really difficult to to treat the stats with this match with supreme confidence because um, Hampton hasn't played um, a great deal of matches on grass so we're kind of like looking at the statistics for her 
limited sample on grass, but maybe like using her some hard court stats as well to um, put into the mix, but then adjusting them for um, some back tested averages that I've got to compare um, hard to grass over a large sample. Um, so, which will obviously increase the percentage of time that a player holds from hard court, but decreases their chances of breaking. Anyway, we pull that into the into the mix, and we get a projected hold of 84.8% for Hampton and 60.2% 60 for Safarovo. Um, possibly those stats are a bit unfair on Safarovo because, say, with the small sample size and stuff, it's it, it, it's 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 quite difficult to. Um, for that match to be completely exact, but clearly here from the stats that I do have, it shows that Hampton um, is should be dominant in the match for sure. So I'll be looking. We, we, we look at the the uh, best prices available on the match. Hampton's available at 185 and Safarova at 2.2. So um, my model came out with. Um, Hampton being priced at 141 and uh, Safari at 3.44. So we can see it's clearly, according to my model, great value on Jamie Hampton to win this match. Um, so, with the value on Hampton and Safari having a low projected hold for, for, or for the um, WTA in general, what I'm going to be looking at is um, opposing Safari over pretty much blanket in her service games because. She's no value, as we can see from these stats, and also she's um, got a projected hold of 9.2% below the 69.4% um, uh, mean grass for the WTA. So that's 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 an angle that I'm definitely going to be taking, I definitely would have taken into account before the game. As it happened in the match, Safarova um, was pretty dominant for the sort of first for a set and a half, maybe, yeah, I think she, memory serves me rightly, she um, she was pretty close to winning in the second set before, for uh, I think she got broken serving for the match, serving for the match in the second set, and 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 then and then and then Hampton went went through and won it in the third. Um, so um, statistic statistically, that's 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 my analysis of the match. I'll be opposing Safarova. And if I remember correctly, Safarova um, uh, defended a lot of break points to start with. And it doesn't mean to say that you can, if you're going to lay a player's serve at 0 0 in their service game, you need to see it through to the bitter end of a hold or break. You can, you know, there's nothing wrong with, if, if your player's 15 40 up when you back, uh, back them when they're receiving serve, there's, there's, no, there's no problem getting out if you want to try and bank some profit, as long as you've got it for the right reasons, really. Um, personally, in this game, that wouldn't have been necessarily a recommended um, scenario because, um, as you can see here, um, Safarova has got a 0.6% uh, uh, breakpoint clutch score. So that's how good a player is at serving points compared to serving break points compared to a winning a normal point on their serve. So uh, what I look at here is comparing the uh, breakpoint save percentage to um, the actual player's service points one percentage, and then doing the same for their opponent when they're on re receiving serve, um, and and kind of using uh, referring then that to the WTA and ATP means for those um, for those um, stats. So Safra is a zero point six for her breakpoint cup score, so it is pretty average. There's 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 no real need to. To, to think about trading out if your player is leading 1540 on on her serve on if you if you back Hampton on the Safari over serve there's no real there's no real like pressing need to get out at that point you know, if you're very very risk averse and I guess you can but I don't really I don't really see there's a pressing need however if you look at the match between um, Elena Vesnina and Lena um, that's completely different because they both got real high um, breakpoint clutch score percentages especially Vesnina 6.9 uh, Lena 3.1. So, say for sake of argument, you decided that a good course of action would be to lay this Nina serve. Um, well, um, if you're if if therefore backing Lena on the Vesnina serve, 
you'd be looking to get out a, 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 a break point, bearing in mind that um, Vesnina has got a great uh, percentage chance of, or above average percentage chance of saving that break point. Um, it's very unlikely, I think, that the market will take that into account, uh, how good a player is at saving break points. And, and that's definitely some area that we can exploit. Um, that match there itself showed that the Vesnina has low project hold with Lena high, but the um, stats uh, led to the my model basically coming out at exact market prices. So there was definitely no no massive value in 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 trading those ma the, the match on that basis. He, 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 yeah, you could you could possibly lay lay Vesnina. Um, but when when serving, but it's not really it's not really something that I would massively advocate. Bearing in mind that her actual price really at the start of the match is is, is negligible value. Um, so you know you, you can do it, but I wouldn't go as overboard on laying Elvis Nina's serve as I would the Safara of a serve, even though Elvis has got a slightly less projected hole, but. As you can see, Sephiroth was no no value pre match, so that was that was why I decided to do that. Um, there's some other interesting matches that we've got here. Um, okay, we've got uh, Kirilenko versus Wickmeyer. Um, Wickmeyer has got a great um, clutch score for saving break points as well. Um, average uh, projected hold, um, but she is value according to my model. Pre match, so we could look at uh, backing Wickmeyer when she's facing a break point on her serve, and um, then if she gets about to juice, uh, then we can green out with some nice profit. If if she does lose that that um, break point and get broken, then maybe we can we're going to have to red out for for a small loss. But if she can get it back to juice, which the statistics show are reasonably likely, average projected hold and a high break point clutch score. Uh, percentage plus the fact that she was actually value pre-match indicates that yeah that's that would be a viable option. Going down to um, the match between uh, Gabi Magreza and um, Dominika Sivalkova, um, again small grass sample on Magreza, so um, that's that's not ideal. But both women have a low projected hold uh, value on Magreza um, pre-match and. Um, that means that we're definitely going to be looking at laying the civil cover serve pretty much from the off because again like the like Safar over in the top in the um first match we're going to be there's she's no value pre match and she's got a low projected hold so we've got a pretty much win win situation there for laying the civil cover serve so probably at least for the first few service games I'm definitely going to be laying civil cover prior to her service game. And then if she holds well, I'll take the, take the small loss. If she gets broken, then I've made great profit. And um, in this situation, with the value being on the Spaniard, I'll probably look to if say 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 Simulco did get broken, I'll probably look to do something like um, eradicate my my liability on Simulco by keeping all my all my green on the Rosa. Um, at that point, bearing in mind that the value was on her pre-match. And um, and now I've got some kind of some decent profit to work with uh, in the future trading. Um, looking at this match uh, here, we've got Halep versus Serenko. Um, projected holds are kind of average with um, um, the value being on Serenko pre-match, but. Halep had, had been in a great run of form, um, but she had, as you can see from the notes on the right-hand side, played eight matches in nine days. And um, you've got to be thinking, well, okay, fatigue is going to be creeping in at this point. So, so I was quite happy to to look to oppose Halep in the match. As it worked out, Halep won fairly straightforwardly. Um, but at 1.3 starting price, uh, you don't really, yeah, it's. It's not, it's not ideal. Obviously, she does win, but you're not taking huge risks, um, especially when she's got a low clutch score, slightly below um, projected hold, 67.8 compared to 69.4 average, 
and clearly no value on her pre-match fatigue as well. Yeah, I'd say that's a, vi uh, a viable probably lay from the start. Definitely lay some opening service games kind of scenario. Um, uh, there's a few options there really. Moving back to the men, um, the match in each one didn't really have a great deal of value. Um, and pre-match, apart from a bit on Bernard Tomic against Gilles Simon, Simon's a great player to trade because he 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 he's he's got a really weak serve and um, breaks uh, a very high percentage of the time. Um, he's a really good player to kind of either lay when he's a break up or or back when he's break down because those fluctuations do happen quite a lot. He's he's one of a number of players that I really like to do that do that with. Um, Couple of others that I could mention there: Benoit Pair, um, Bedene, um, Angelos Bedene, um, Fognini to a certain extent. Uh, Bautista Agu is another great one. Beneto as well. So there's some quite, some quite um, good examples there of some players who I really think uh, are kind of vulnerable when leading um, and uh, fight fight well when they're behind. Um, Another, there was a couple in the WTA as well. Gobbalt Sober springs to mind as someone who's a really un, unreliable front runner. Uh, quite good at um, coming back as well. Plays, maybe plays their best tennis when losing. Um, anyway, so we've got Tom H. B. Simon here. As we can see, projected holds are both low. Um, so um, with the value on, on Tom H. pre-match, I'm going to be looking at um, opposing Simon wherever possible in this scenario on his cert. Um, bearing in mind of of course, that his breakpoint of actual score is high. So again, we're going to be looking to oppose Simon on serve, and and then um, get out when there's a break when he when he when when we've got a breakpoint against his serve at least, or at least kind of cover our liability in that scenario, leaving maybe zero profit on Simon and all of our profit uh, potential profit on Tomic. Um, there's various ways which you, you can you can structure structure your Hedging, but that that that's kind of like a reasonable approach. I feel um, the other two matches where this the projected holds are both low is the ones between um, Dodig and Fognini and uh, Seppi versus Stepanek. Um, as you can see here, the box uh, projected holds between 71.7 and 76.1, which is real low for men um, with average being 82.8. So we can definitely expect breaks in those matches. Uh, for sure, especially when only Step and X got a decent, decent breakpoint save percentage. So, um, whilst there's no value, real, real value on the players pre-match, especially in the Sepi versus Stephanie match, yeah, maybe a bit of value on Fognini against Dodig. Um, not, nothing crazy, but a bit. Um, especially with the Step, Sepi Stephanie match, we can pretty much look to, to trade both players' serves um, quite viably. Um, Knowing that there's there's very little value on either player pre match, um, if a player goes a break up, then we can definitely lay them for a start. That's that's a definite viable strategy. Preferably it's going to be stepping up because then then you, your low price will be be quite a bit lower. Um, and he actually leads the head to head five nil in that match or four nil since 2011. So more more recently, I don't I'm not a big fan of of um, head, looking at head to head records, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty dominant and fairly recently. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, definitely bear that in mind. However, Seppi does have a great record in Eastbourne, so he loves it there. So um, that's also something that, that that would have been worth bearing in mind uh, analysing that match. Um, so like I say, yeah, we can look at we can we can we can definitely look to to lay both players serve selectively in that match, especially like uh, when they break up sure or possibly even like first opening few service games looking for a break uh taking some small losses if players hold or getting some really nice results if 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 there is a break for either player really um going down into her Tosh and bosch uh, atp uh charlie versus favrinka um i think I wasn't alone in thinking that Chardy was decent value in that match. Um, Vavrinka doesn't really have a great record in Guas, especially in um, run-up tournaments to, to, to Wimbledon. So um, 
I think that there's clear, clear value on Chardy pre-match. Um, predict holds marginally above ATP mean. Um, so looking at that, we can probably say, well, there's going to be some value either backing Chardy on surf when he's losing, bearing in mind he's got a got a high um, high clutch score per saving break points, or I don't really like so much the idea of laying Vavrinka when he's leading, bearing in mind that his his projected hold is above average even though he's no value pretty much. But I think I think getting involved in the Chardy serve would have been uh, a viable trading strategy for sure. Uh, looking to try and back him when losing in the match. Um, the other two matches, it's real hard to, to, to get a concrete beyond. We're bearing in mind that Donskoy and Batista Gu have both uh, only had two career matches on grass in the ATP Tour against players uh, Mahu and Melise, who um, love playing on grass, got great records on grass. So it, it is tough to it's tough to make make a complete and utter confident judgment on those two matches. Although it's clear to see here that uh, from the stats I do have, which with, with like I said earlier when we talked about the Hampton game, Bautista who um, I had to look at some of his hard court stats and try to convert them. Um, not ideal, but the stats that I did have showed that he he was a bit of value for the game. Um, and Melise and him both have real low projected holes, and like I said earlier, Batista is a great player for trading back when he's break up or break down. Um, so I guess from what the stats I do have, opposing the Melise serve would have been a viable trading proposition. The projected holes real low, and he's no value pretty much. But I wouldn't have gone overboard on that game because there's such a lack of stats on Bautista do on grass that I can't look at that real confidently and uh, and say that, that and say that that's something that I feel I feel I feel great about doing. So low, lower stakes and um at one point three for Malise pre match that's not it, it, it's it's not the biggest risk anyway either. So kinda of that gives you a um a bit of a view on the information that's involved in the tennis racing spreadsheet. Uh, from a trading basis, as we can see on the left, we've got um, the players in highlighted in prices highlighted in red are the value prices, and we can look to to use that for pretty much betting information as well. So, based on what I've got here, um, you've definitely got value on Hampton, Wickmeyer, Pironkova, uh, Muguruza, Serenko, Ursula uh, Rosvanska, Tomic, Jeremy Chardy. Donskoy and Bautista Agu. Although Donskoy, Bautista Agu, Muguruza and Hampton kind of have a bit of a caveat saying because of the they haven't played a lot of matches on grass and uh, sample size isn't as reliable as as a lot of other players. But then you can look at that information and say, well, okay, well, they're the players what I'm going to back today. And, or you could be a bit more selective and say, I'm only going to back the players to the big edges such as Hampton, Pironkova, etc. And um, look, yeah, yeah, look, 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 look to be a bit more selective. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed watching the video and you've got a lot out of it. And maybe, um, maybe it's, it's inspired you to, to have a go at uh, uh, purchasing the spreadsheets and then using them uh, whilst whilst trading to, to make those informed decisions. Uh, you can buy the spreadsheets on my website, at tennisratings.co.uk. Uh, so they start uh, as, for as little as a pound a day for a 30 day spreadsheet, 30 pounds for 30 days, or as small as five pounds cost for a one day one day subscription. So I hope you, like I say, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, giving you a few thoughts about your trading and um, how to um, how to attack the markets and uh, yeah, speak soon.